Hey, I'm Matt with Meat Church. Tonight, let's make chocolate pecan cobbler. Well, you guys always ask for more sides, more desserts, and as my man Don says, when you buy that expensive grill and you want to justify it, here's what you do. You make a dessert on it for the wife and suddenly she's no longer uh, upset at how much you spent. But this recipe is very near and dear to my heart. This was the very first recipe that I ever demonstrated when I started teaching outdoor cooking. Pretty funny story, actually. Um, I was doing a demo at a Big Green Egg Fest in Austin and the promoter called me and said, hey, um, I know you cook everything outside. Uh, is there any way you could switch from this meat dish I was doing to dessert? And I was like, yeah, sure. And I thought, well, I'm the meat church guy and I'm going to do dessert. But I was following Aaron Franklin who showed up to the crowd cooking on an extra large big green egg, a double XL that had just come out, throws tomahawk ribeye right in the fire, um, cooks it caveman style, wins a crowd over, and then I'll roll up on stage to cook at the time my pecan cobbler. And Aaron stuck around to watch the demo uh, it turned out pretty good. A lady walked up to me and she said, you know what would make this better? And I was like, what? And she said, chocolate. So we've added chocolate to it. This was way back in 2014. This is super easy to make. It's awesome for the summer. Um, you can cook it on any type of cooker. Heck, you can cook it in your oven, but how much fun is that? None. So we're going to cook it outside today um, on a Traeger because we're cooking it at 350 and pellet grill makes sense for that. So let's jump into it. Very, very easy. Uh, I'm going to grab a big bowl here and uh, a skillet. You can cook this in a lot of things. Um, normally, I, I cook it in a half disposable steam pan, um, which is you know nice and easy. But if you want it to present really pretty, then you can do it in a skillet. I'm going to do it in a number nine size Griswold cast iron skillet. You guys know I like vintage skillets. One thing I'll tell you up front, uh, what you cook it in will vary your cook times uh, depending on the depth of the cobbler. So on this one, uh, we'll cook this for 50, five zero minutes. But if you use a different type of uh, vessel to cook it in, then it could vary just a little bit. So let's jump in. Go to the store, buy yourself two pie crusts. You can make your own if you want, but I'd rather just go buy this. Super easy. Get it out of the package. You wanna roll it out and you just wanna line the bottom of whatever you're cooking it in and trim the excess off, which I'll just use an inexpensive boning knife to do that, so don't worry about if I kinda of dull it out a little bit. Uh, the pan is buttered, by the way. Just lay your pie crust down in the bottom. And then I just take my knife and real quickly, since I didn't put it in that super duper even, just go along the outside corner here and just cut the excess off. So we're cooking at night. We just finished our hardcore barbecue series. And as we mentioned in our last couple videos, uh, it was like fly Mageddon. And the beautiful thing at cooking at night, not only is it cooler and it looks really pretty with our lights, but the flies aren't here. So that's, that's how we ended up here. And sorry about not having a video last week. If you don't know, we're moving Meat Church Barbecue Supply into a place twice as big due to our growth. And so we've just been preoccupied with that and weren't able to shoot a video. Nice and easy. So now let's make our mixture. So what do we got here? Well, two and a half cups of light brown sugar. Two and a half cups of light corn syrup. Listen, I'm going back to what I always say in here to help you lose weight. This is freaking delicious, by the way. So just trust me on this. Okay, I've got a stick of butter melted, one stick unsalted. Six large eggs that I whisk together here. Four and a half teaspoons of vanilla. Try to use the real stuff. Okay. Once that's all mixed up, let's mix it all together here. Combine it really well. Use a whisk if you want. And then we're going to fold in two cups of chopped pecans, which I'll do in just a second after I mix this up. I'll use the 
disc. All right, that looks good. Let me set that aside for a minute. I'm gonna bring in some pecans. So my good buddy, Jeff Warren, who owns South Georgia Pecan, sent me, uh, we're gonna work on a little project together involving pecans. And uh, one day I saw the UPS man struggling, walking up to my door. I was like, what's he doing? Well, he's carrying me like a 50 pound box of pecans. So thanks, Jeff. These are, these are definitely uh, farm to table fresh as can be. I'm just going to chop these up a little bit. Ooh. All right, I don't know whose idea it was to do this on camera. Mine. But here we are. All right, two cups, and now we're going to fold those in. Appreciate the pecans, Jeff. Jeff's pretty dang good outdoor cook, and he told me if I used his pecans, it would help him get some credibility amongst his Georgia buddies. So good luck, Jeff. Also owns a pretty dang awesome tequila brand, Dos Primos, with his cousin that sings country music. All right, let me tell you something. I ain't mad at it. All right, back to the pan here. So the lady in Austin was right. So I add, this is a, just a bag of milk chocolate chips on the bottom and I just spread them out completely even. This is a nice touch. I've also put bourbon in this before, which is really good and I'm kind of shocked I'm not doing that tonight, but I'm going with the OG recipe. This was the second ever recipe on meatchurch.com. So once you've got the chips laid out across, the chocolate chips laid out across the bottom, you wanna pour in half of the mixture. So we're gonna pour half this mixture in, we're gonna put another pie crust over it and we're going to do the first portion of the cook. So just kind of eyeball this, doesn't have to be exact, it's a cobbler. That's the beautiful thing about cobbler, it's gonna be messy in the end and that's perfectly fine. That's probably about half, maybe just a hair more. Okay, that's good. So we're gonna set this aside. We're gonna grab the other pie crust and we're gonna cover this So while I'm doing this, let's talk about cooking. This is incredibly simple. We are running a Traeger Ironwood 885, and I'm using pecan pellets. You know, I'm not trying to be cheeky with because we're cooking a pecan dish, but the reason I chose pecan, if you follow my barbecue videos, you know when I cook traditional barbecue, I like a heavier smoke wood, uh, post oak, hickory, that sort of thing. But with a dessert, I wanna go a little more subtle smoke. So lower on the smoke scale would be pecan. You could even do something like a fruit wood if you wanted even less uh, smoky flavor. So I'm gonna do the same thing here where I'm just gonna lightly trim away, just kind of trim away the excess. You don't have to do this. Um, this pie crust, this excess pie crust, a lot of people love to keep it because it tastes great. Um, I'm just kind of doing this for the look, honestly, just to keep it nice and even. So this, this step right here is optional. Okay, there we go. Nice and easy. Uh, the Traeger's running, so I'm gonna throw it in. We're gonna cook it for 20 minutes, which this is gonna start to set. After 20 minutes, we're gonna pour the rest of the topping on and put a layer of half pecans on it and go back in for 30 minutes. So really, really easy. I'll see y'all in 20 minutes. Timer just went off, it's been 20 minutes, so let's pull it out. Smells amazing already. All right. So I'm gonna get my mixture, a little mix here. Freshen it up. We're gonna pour it over.
Get all that goodness out of there. Okay. Now the somewhat painstaking part. Got to make it look pretty. So I'm going to completely cover this with pecans. And my OCD is going to get the best of me. So you don't have to do that. If you just want to throw pecans on here and throw it back in for half an hour, you can. But, you know, I got to do it for the gram. If you're all watching on YouTube, it's got to look pretty. So give me a few minutes. I'm going to completely cover this up and we're going to put it back in for 30 minutes. All right, and five hours later, my OCD's happy and we're done. Going right back in, still 350, I've already told you, 30 minutes. The important thing here, you want this to set. So this feels really loose right now if you move it around. So again, what I said in the beginning, depending on what you're cooking it in, you may need a little more time, a little less time, but if you're using a comparable skillet, it's gonna be about 30 minutes or 50 minutes total. Woo, careful. All right, I'll see y'all in 30 minutes. All right, spend 30 more minutes. Let's see. Boom. Smoky. Whew. First off, it's all toasted and smells epic. All right, I'm gonna go get myself some vanilla ice cream, let this cool off, and then we're gonna dig in. Okay, it's cooled off somewhat. Uh, this is the most atomic thing you'll ever cook, so you definitely have to let it cool. Got my vanilla ice cream here, and uh, I'm going over here on the edge because I want some of the crusty stuff. Oh my God, well, that's what I'm talking about. Don't tell the doctor. Holy crap, wish y'all could smell this. All right, it's a cobbler, it's gonna be messy. You gotta get all the things, including Jeff's pecans. Where's that chocolate? Let me dig back down in here and get the chocolate. Here we go. Bam, that damn lady in Austin was right. I'll be back. So freaking good. Dude. This video won't get the clicks that a barbecue video gets, but y'all gotta make this. This is super, super, super good. And super easy. Not too good for you. Anyway, I'm gonna shut up because I'm gonna keep eating here. So like and subscribe. We'll see y'all next week.